Governor Mitt Romney, thanks so much for joining us here on Newsmax TV. Happy to join you. Well, President Obama announced today that he is reversing himself. Under Obamacare, religious employers will not have to pay for health insurance that covers various forms of birth control. You vetoed the legislation that contained this birth control mandate in Massachusetts health care reform. What would you say to the president about this reversal and his leadership? Well, I think we've, uh, we've seen a president revealed. Uh, he and his friends have relentlessly been attacking religion. Uh, there was a decision known as the Hosanna case where they went before the Supreme Court ultimately arguing that government should be able to determine who is a minister within the meaning of the ministerial uh, exemption from EEOC uh, regulations. Uh, the Supreme Court voted against this administration nine to zero. But when you have Ruth Bader Ginsburg think that the president has gone too far, well, you've really gone too far. And this president, I think, has revealed himself as someone who is part of an effort to try and uh, brush aside the religious uh, conscience and convictions of, of the American people. Now, why do you think that the White House and President Obama uh, keep supporting policies, the HHS mandate on Catholic institutions, the proposed cut in tax deductions for charitable, charitable contributions, and that Supreme Court case that you just talked about, issues that social conservatives find particularly offensive? Why do you think that Obama keeps supporting these policies? Well, I, I can't be entirely certain, but I can imagine that if, if you go to the fundraisers uh, that, uh, that President Obama goes to and that the people he meets with day in and day out are talking about uh, religion, uh, guns, God. I mean, these are the kinds of things that, 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 they, uh, that they talk about in some respects, want to see uh, our nation to become more secular. There, there's no, no question, but that there is an effort on the part of some to impose a more secular view on America. I think that's the wrong course. Uh, from our very beginnings, uh, America has been a nation under God. And, and we respect people who have differing views, but we also respect the right to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience and to practice our faith in the way our conscience would suggest. Now, you just delivered a speech here at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, chronicling your conservative credentials, but there is this perception that you have kept grassroots conservatives and the party's more conservative elements at arm's length. Governor Perry and Herman Cain have chosen to endorse Newt Gingrich. Do you think that you can seal the deal with the party's conservatives? Well, I'm really happy to have a number of leading conservatives as part of my team. Al Cardenas, who's a head of a CPAC here, um, uh, Bay Buchanan, uh, the, the list goes on, Mark DeMoss. Uh, we've, we've got some of the nation's leading conservative voices and thinkers that are part of my effort. And I, uh, I, I very much appreciate the perspective that, that others offer, but I am a person who's conservative, not just based on readings, but based on experience. I've lived conservatism lived it in my home, lived it in my business, in my faith, uh, and as governor of Massachusetts, I was fighting the battles that conservatives are now having to fight nationally, battles on same-sex marriage, battles on uh, matters of, uh, uh, of intrusion of state into the rights of individuals to worship according to their, uh, their conscience, these kinds of things I've been fighting, and uh, my bona fides as a conservative uh, have been tested time and again. So are you the best conservative to take on President Obama, and, if, and why? Well, uh, each of us who's running for, for president on the Republican side is conservative. Uh, we have differing backgrounds, uh, and, and no one of us can probably uh, be shown to be 100% uh, ideal. Uh, you know, I happen to consider uh, Senator Santorum a fine person, but I wouldn't have voted for all those earmarks he voted for. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have voted to raise uh, uh, the, the, uh, um, the debt limit in the country, the debt ceiling, five times without getting compensating cuts in spending. Uh, I, I, I'm not a, a guy who spends and, and caps and earmarks. In fact, I'm opposed to earmarks. I would ban earmarks if I were president. So we have different views on some issues, but fundamentally the big difference between us all is not just where we are on various issues and not just on our commitment to conservative values, which we all share, but instead our differences in life experience. The other people running for office have spent their life in Washington. Uh, I, I make an exception for Ron Paul. He also was a doctor. Uh, but, uh, but Speaker Gingrich and, and Senator Santorum have been lifelong Washington folks. Uh, they, they rail against Washington, but they never leave. And, and my view is that if we want to get America to turn around and to change Washington, you better bring someone in who has lived outside of Washington, who understands how the economy works and why it is America is so unique. It is the ability of individuals to pursue dreams in their own way, as opposed to government guiding them, that makes us such an unusual nation. I understand that. 
I've lived that. I've lived conservatism. I think we need that in the White House. Now, the mainstream media has tried to portray you as a wealthy man who's out of touch with mainstream America. Why do you think that there's been this media rush and White House rush to stereotype you as disconnected from the average American? I think you'll see the White House throughout this campaign suggest that anyone who's been successful is somehow detached. But I'm not going to get lectured to by a president who has presided over one of the worst economies we've seen in our lifetime, actually the worst we've seen in our lifetime, where you have more people who've lost their job under this president than under any other president in modern history, more people have lost their homes under this president than any president in modern history, and he is in no position to lecture us on values or fairness. We're in a position to lecture him about how we get America working again. So, uh, you know, he'll attack my success, I will attack his failures. Now, New York Times columnist David Brooks puts this disconnect issue in the context of your Mormon religion. He suggests that you come across as uncomfortable on the subject because you feel you're unable to talk about your proud Mormon cultural traditions without your faith becoming a focal point for political attacks, similar to what JFK endured uh, with his Catholicism. What are your takes? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, I'm happy to talk about my faith uh, as people ask questions about it. I gave a speech, as you know, on this uh, at the George Herbert Walker Bush Library and, uh, and described my view about faith in America. Uh, we're a, a nation that respects differences in, in religion among uh, our various uh, uh, people in this country. I, I think we, we prefer as a nation to select someone who has a conviction th uh, that there is a God uh, as our president. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm, people want to ask me about my, my religion. I'm happy to tell you, although I'm not a spokesman for my church. There are plenty of those around, as I'm sure you know. But a lot of my experiences in, uh, in, in understanding the, the challenges that, that many people face, different people face, come not only from my own life, but from my work in my church. I, I served as a pastor. In my, in my church, we don't have a full-time minister. We have people who volunteer. As, as pastors, and I, I was the pastor for my congregation for almost 10 years. And so I worked with people who lost their jobs, who lost a, a home or couldn't pay for their, their rent, people who became very ill, people in divorce. Uh, I, I worked with, uh, with Americans that were facing real challenging times and ministered to them, pastored them to try and help them through those times. Mm -hmm. Th those experiences are very much a part of who I am mm -hmm. and how I understand the kinds of challenges that Americans are facing right now. Okay, you graciously congratulated Rick Santorum after his trifecta of wins on Tuesday, labeling him a leading contender, but already your press shop and surrogates have slammed Rick Santorum for earmarks, we just talked about it a short time ago, for big spending, raising the debt ceiling as well, a negative strategy that your campaign used successfully against Newt Gingrich in Florida. Do you see the GOP nomination process needing to continue in this negative manner? Well, Senator Santorum has pretty much gone across the country over the last year attacking me, and no one really noticed until he got a little more visibility. Uh, but, but he uh, has been a relentless uh, attacker of my positions, and in many respects I, I, I take exception with his characterization of my views and my record. Uh, but he also is going to have to undergo the same scrutiny that every other candidate undergoes. Uh, we, we each talk about our relative strengths and weaknesses. We'll all do pretty well if we stick to the truth. And, uh, and, and sometimes people get the facts wrong, and uh, that, that's something that's very discouraging. But people stick to the truth will be fine because, frankly, we're going to get hit very, very hard by Barack Obama with a billion dollars to spend, and now he's opening up, going after super PAC money. Uh, he is, uh, he's going to be relentless. So uh, th this process we're going through, it really, does not, uh, it really doesn't divide us. It's preparing us for what's going to come. We're going to be stronger and ready to, to defeat Barack Obama. Governor Romney, you are notably passionate in your opposition to cuts in military spending. Why such passion on the issue? Well, I happen to believe that the, the, the nations around the world are a lot stronger are in, and investing a lot more in their military than, than we give them credit for. And I believe that the threats that exist in the world are far more dangerous than we, that, that we really uh, consider. Uh, North Korea, with the change in leadership and uh, new rumors today about uh, that change in leadership in North Korea. China insisting that they own the South China Sea and that we should have to ask permission for our ships to go through it. By the way, about half the trade in all the world goes through the South China Sea. The Arab Spring turning into an Arab winter under this president. Syria in tumult. Um, Pakistan with nuclear weapons. Uh, Latin America under a Bolivarian effort on the part of Hugo Chavez and, and Castro and with, uh, with Hezbollah now infiltrating certain parts of Latin America. There's a lot in the world that's dangerous. And the idea that in a circumstance like this, 
we would decide to cut our military? Our, our, our Navy is smaller than any time since 1917. Our Air Force, older and smaller than since when it was founded in 47. The, the, this is not a time to, to retreat from our military readiness and our, and our superiority. And I will make sure that we maintain the superiority, which in my view is one of the best allies peace has ever known. Last question for you, Governor Romney. It is October 22nd, 2012, the final presidential debate at Lynn University in Florida. You and President Obama are on stage. What is the final message that you want the American voters to hear that will propel you past President Obama and into the White House? Well, they'll want to know about jobs and who could do the best to turn around our economy and create jobs. But my message is going to be slightly above that or substantially above that. I'm going to talk about what kind of America we want to have. Whether we want to have an America which is governed by government, telling us how to live our lives, paying more and more people the, the, the benefits that, that, uh, that some people want, a, a nation which is of and by government. That's, that's what President Obama represents. I'm going to be talking about taking America in a direction which returns to the, the values that made us the most powerful nation in the world, both economically, militarily, culturally. And those values include a conviction in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the freedom of individuals in America to pursue their dreams. If we kill the pioneering, innovative, creative spirit of Americans by overwhelming Americans with government and the pathway to pursue happiness as we choose, America will cease being America. We'll become a, a, a less prosperous nation less able to defend our freedoms. That's the choice that exists in this election, and I'll make it very clear in that final debate. Governor Mitt Romney, thank you. Thanks, good to be with you.